now we begin with the disorders of adenexa and appendages. So what are the adenexa or the appendages that are there in the skin? You have the hair. We have already discussed the hair disorders. Uh, you have the eccrine sweat gland. You can have the apocrine sweat gland and you have the sebaceous gland. So these are the three things that we are going to discuss and we are going to discuss the disorders of these three things as well. So sebaceous gland, please remember it's a holocrine gland. So what is the meaning of a holocrine gland? Holo holocrine gland means the whole cell disintegrates to release its contents. The maximum concentration of the sebaceous glands is on the face and the scalp. And the sebaceous glands are absent over the palms and the soles. Please remember this. Sebaceous glands are absent over the palms and the soles. And the maximum intensity or the density of the eccrine sweat glands is on the palms and the soles. Okay. Now, sebaceous glands are present since birth. They are androgen dependent and they become active at puberty. The function of the sebaceous gland is to lubricate the skin and the hair. Now, a disorder and the most common disorder of the sebaceous gland is acne vulgaris. It's a chronic inflammatory disorder of the pyrosebaceous follicles, typically involving the face, neck, upper trunk and the upper arms. The typical lesions are comedones. Comedones we have already seen in the basic skin lesions. They are of two types, the open comedones and the closed comedones. Open comedones are where the blockage of the hair follicle is exposed to the air. It oxidizes and turns black. And the in the closed comedones, the keratin plug is a little deeper and it is not exposed to the hair and uh, air and that's how it doesn't turn black and it's deeper and that's why you call it as a white, uh, white head or a closed comedone. Right? So, comedones are not only seen in acne as I mentioned earlier, they are also seen in conditions like hydradenitis suppurativa and nevus comedonicus. But the typical lesion that you see, see in acne is a comedone and you can also have papules, pustules, nodules and scars. Now what triggers acne? The pubertal change triggers acne because in puberty the adrenal gland gets activated. You have release of lot of androgens and that is going to trigger acne. PCOS, one of the most common causes of acne is uh, basically uh, acne is one of the manifestations of insulin resistance and uh, hyperandrogenemia that one can see as a part of PCOS. Oil application on the skin, okay, and if you're using very greasy products on the skin, that is something that can cause acne. Summer, because of the, de of the hydration of the duct, can further aggravate acne. Drugs, uh, sometimes certain drugs can cause acne form eruptions like phenytoin, lithium, uh, further even uh, anticonvulsants um, as well as uh, AKT especially INH and uh, that can also trigger acne form eruptions. Most commonly steroids, oral steroids, topical steroids can trigger acne form eruptions and can aggravate pre-existing acne. Menstrual disturbances of course, of course as a part of PCOS also the progesterone surge that happens in the pre-menstrual phase can aggravate acne and cosmetics. Okay. Now, so basically, as I mentioned, the holocrine glands, uh, that is the sebaceous glands occurring in conjunction with the hair follicle that are known as the pilosebaceous unit. And they are present all over the body except the palms and the soles. So, this is what happens in acne. Basically, there is a blockage of the duct of the sebaceous gland as a result of which there is retention of the contents. The contents are a good medium for the propione bacterium acnes to multiply. And that further incites the inflammation and the collection and chemotaxis of the neutrophils in the dermis. And that leads to the inflammatory variation of acne. So the primary event that triggers all this is the microcomedo formation, which is nothing but the hyperkeratinization of the hair follicle. And the additional factors include the bacterial proliferation of P acnes, excess sebum production and hormonal factors like androgen stimulation, insulin resistance and IGF-1 release. Now, there are two kinds of lesions that we see in acne. One is the non-inflammatory lesions which are comedones and the inflammatory lesions are the papules, pustules, nodules and cysts which are not actually true cysts but they are called as cystic acne. Now, this is grade 1 acne where you can see predominantly this patient is having multiple comedones. Now, as you can see few of them are open comedones, few of them are closed comedones which are seen on the uh, which are seen on the forehead. 
right so this is uh, the, this is basically uh, the grade 1 acne okay where you see predominantly comedonal lesions this is grade 2 acne where in addition see basically here you can see there are comedones but in addition to that you are seeing that there are multiple papular lesions okay so you can see that there are multiple papules that is the inflammatory component of acne so this is grade 2 acne this is grade 4 acne or grade 3 acne sorry where you have in addition to the papules you can see there are multiple pustules right so predominantly pustular lesions would qualify as grade 3 acne and this is grade 4 acne where you have actual nodules okay so this is nodulocystic acne and there is hormonal acne so hormonal acne when occurs because of an underlying hormonal factor which is most commonly polycystic ovarian syndrome it can also be seen in uh, congenital adrenal hyperplasia late onset congenital adrenal hyperplasia and cushing's disease so what actually happens in pcos the primary driving factor in pcos is insulin resistance insulin resistance causes the ovaries to release more of the androgens the androgens released from the ovary uh, then stimulates the androgen receptors in the sebaceous glands and this increases the sebum production and the follicular androgen stimulation causes growth of hair on the skin, beard as well as keratinization of the hair follicle and that leads to the formation of the comedone. So primarily what's happening in PCOS is the trigger insulin resistant causing the androgen oversurge causing the effect on the androgen dependent areas so that is why in pcos based acne especially when you see adult acne it's more along the jawline you see associated hypertrichosis hirsutism as well as female pattern baldness as an association now drug induced acne is qualified as an acne form eruption acne form eruption typically differs from acne from the fact that in acne form eruption is usually an eruptive onset you usually don't see associated comedones and the most common site of involvement is the uh, trunk. There can be associated symptoms like associated itching and burning sensation. Now drug induced acne can be most commonly caused by topical and oral steroids. It can also be caused by anabolic steroids like danazol and stanazolol. Anticonvulsants like carbamazepine, phenytoin, phenobarbital can cause acne. AKT is a very, very important cause of acne form eruptions in India. Remember INH and PZA, they can cause drug-induced acne. EGFR inhibitors, that is epidermal growth factor receptor inhibitors, that is erlotinib, jeftinib, lepatinib, cetuctinib, and pantanumab, they can cause acne form eruptions. Oral contraceptive pills can cause acne form eruptions. It is the progesterone component which has androgenic properties which is responsible for aggravation of acne. And as I mentioned, in acne form eruptions, the lesions are monomorphic. They are papules. They are situated on the trunk and there are no comedones. So this is a topical steroid-induced acne, uh, aggravated acne, where you can appreciate that in addition, the patient has developed multiple acne uh, lesions in the form of comedones. You can appreciate a few papules. You can also see the amount of hypertrichosis the, the patient has had. Because all these are side effects of the topical steroid abuse in addition to thinning of the skin and hypopigmentation. Now there are certain severe variants of acne which you should be aware of and that is acne conglobata. So what happens in acne conglobata? There is severe inflammation. So you see extensive inflammatory papules, tender nodules and abscesses. Typically you will see that there will be interconnecting sinuses. Okay. So you will see there will be, see you had comedones, you had papules, you had pustules, you had nodules. Now if you see that there are extensive inflammatory nodules which are forming abscesses and you see that these nodules are interconnecting to each other, okay, that is suggestive of acne conglobata. So obviously because it is so severe, when it heals, it is going to heal with a lot of scarring. Multiple grouped comedones are also typical and how do you treat such a severe acne? You have to give the patient oral isotretinoin but please remember oral isotretinoin if you have to give you have to give in a low dose in the initial phase that's because isotretinoin itself can aggravate acne initially. So the best method is to combine the oral isotretinoin in a low dose with a steroid. Why a steroid? Because with a steroid you are limiting the inflammation that can happen as a result of which you are limiting the amount of scarring that will eventuate. 
okay so start with a low dose of oral isotretinoin with steroid taper the steroid and continue oral isotretinoin and then gradually escalate the dose of oral isotretinoin then a next entity which is very very important which you should remember and that is febrile ulcerative acne also called as acne fulminans so what is this febrile ulcerative acne it is acne conglobata plus there are systemic symptoms so as in acne conglobata there will be tender nodules there will be abscesses there will be interconnecting sinuses but in addition there can be ulcers in addition that patient is also going to have systemic symptoms so there will be fever there will be arthralgia there will be raised esr there will be leukocytosis okay and this can be triggered by oral isotretinoin if you give oral isotretinoin in a higher dose to an individual who is having very severe acne you may aggravate the problem okay so it can be triggered by oral isotretinoin so what do you do stop oral isotretinoin give the patient steroid stabilize the inflammation and then introduce isotretinoin in a very low dose gradually escalate the dose